Hello there, good morning, welcome. Uh, it's uh, March, what is today, March uh, something, March 10th. Uh, we're getting old, man. I'm not gonna lie, we're getting old. Um, I was gonna talk about the struggles of weight loss, but then I realized I'm eating an ice cream. So, I said, oh, okay. But, no, um, weight loss is definitely a lot harder if you don't have uh, a uh, aggressive uh, fuel source. Um, for me, my weight loss originally was uh, basically all of the just like tired of how I looked, the tired of how I felt, um, the bad environment around me. It was like a way to get outside of the house and stuff like that. It was a lot of different things all billowing up into one giant, you know, gas tank, essentially, and that caused me to go flying forward, um, which was great. Uh, turns out, though, that that was a lot easier than um, the second time. Second time, it's, uh, you know, the calories are, you know, are quite a bit higher than what it was originally. Um, basically, when I first did my weight loss, I was putting in a nine-hour shift that were coming home, slamming down like a huge 16 ounce green smoothie, um, and then just going on a bike ride for, basically I had a rule of no less than an hour, um, but I mean that could range anywhere from an hour to four hours, there was a lot of different bike rides, so that's where that was at, um, but yeah, it just... It's a lot harder because I don't have that much of, uh, that level of working out is, it, it's crazy. Nine hours of working, physical labor at work, um, and then, yeah, just another several hours of that. And then I believe I was, I'd have to look at my numbers, but I, I think I was doing, like, some ridiculous amount of, uh, push-ups. Like, I think I was doing, like, like a hundred jumping jacks and then doing like a couple hundred uh, like sit-ups and push-ups too or something. I think I was doing a bunch of weird shit like that. And I remember I used to have a log too which really was cool. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't think I've gone way too overboard. Like there's definitely, like right when I was working, there was days where we were going out to fast food like twice a day when I was doing both jobs and then um, basically going on to the day shift is what was like crazy because for the longest time I was able to when I was normal I I just did so much work all night long and stuff like that I was able to basically eat whatever I brought in or just you know make a hot pocket or something there but like once I was on on the day on the day staff I was going to McDonald's I was going down to Arby's I was doing all that on top of um you know giant iced coffee on the way in maybe two and all that, all this other, eating this, drinking that, um, whereas now it's like I only have one job, it's usually only a couple days a week, so every day is a little different, but my calories are definitely reduced, I would just say my, the amount of work I'm, my body's going through, you know, because I'm not, I'm not putting in 40 extra hours of physical labor, so I think that definitely is the reason why I've been gaining weight. That's the thing, if you're doing physical stocking, like labor, that is a really good workout for your body. It does fuck your hands up though, and I did get carpal tunnel from it, but... I mean, honestly, my carpal tunnel is gone. Like, I get occasionally, like, little phantom, phantom, uh, pains here and there, but... Not really anymore. There was, there was, I remember vividly, when my carpal tunnel first started, I was waking up, in immense pain and I was slamming my hand on the floor or on the wall and uh, just going fucking Donkey Kong and uh, it just sucked so badly carpal tunnel sucked asshole it was fucking shit hated it but um yeah so that's the situation I'm not taking it too seriously I don't really like I don't have the energy to it sounds like such a lazy thing, but I was in a very crazy mindset when all that stuff was happening. 
Like I like I don't usually like tell people like no fuck that stop that. Like I don't like deny things. Like when people say like oh here you have a snack, I don't usually say like oh no I can't do that man. That's way too many calories. Um, but when I was at that when I was at that level, my dad who was a prime culprit for making me obese, I was telling him no I can't eat that shit. Oh why not? You used to eat it. But yeah, but I don't want to be a fucking loser anymore. Like, I would tell him straight up, like, no, get that the fuck away from me. And that that was the reason why it was so successful. Now it's kind of like, oh, free food. So. But I saw this was only a couple hundred calories. It's whatever. All I've had today was a fucking banana. A banana and my iced coffee that is actually really good. Um, So we bought a Mr. Coffee 12 cup, you know, Brewmaster, whatever the hell you call those things, and uh, we haven't really found like a a, 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 co- a ground coffee that tasted different. Um, they all kind of taste very similar. So we were like, oh, let's just try this new Starbucks one that came out. It's a it's a caramel blend. It's like a it's, I think it's a light or medium roast, but it's it's caramel specifically. That's all that's all I remember. So I was like, oh yeah, let's make a, a pot of that. And uh, what I did is I I brewed it up last night. And then I put it in the refrigerator. So in the morning, I can take my iced coffee, and my wife can have her hers uh, microwaved, and she'll have her hot coffee. And they both came out great. Hot coffee was good. The iced coffee was good. Um, the only problem with my iced coffee is I'm using this thing right here, which is only 20 ounces. And I believe, if I'm correct. If you go to Dunkin' Donuts, you're getting 24 to 32 ounces, something like that. I think it's 20. No, how much is the medium? Because this is a small. This has got to be like 16 ounces right here. Um, yeah, I think a large at Starbucks and a Dunkin' is 32 ounces, which is perfect. That's about a quarter gallon, which is awesome. But yeah, I just drank through my coffee way too quickly. This is the good side. <sighs> Ah, shit. Uh, I have a bunch of topics to talk about. I'm trying to think of something else. Did that, did this. Uh, I was going to talk about Final Fantasy 15. Let me say something about Fortnite real quick. Fortnite is uh, still an everyday thing in my household. I love playing it with my friends. I love playing it by myself, not as much as with friends, of course, but it's very rare to find a game that you enjoy playing solo just as much as you enjoy playing it with friends. I think um, when Halo Wars 2 first came out, I was really into that. RTS games is like the, the perfect example of, of a game, though, for me, where I can, I don't like playing those games 2v2 or 3v3, I like playing them 1v1. Like Command and Conquer, Halo Wars. I really haven't played too many RTS. Like, for me to, because I, I I always say RTS is probably my favorite genre, it just because it gives me like this weird, um, like mindless enjoyment. I, I can like when the Command and Conquer three demo came out, that was like the first real RTS that I played, and I played it on console too. So I've never really played a RTS on PC, but on console. The demo was just one one of the like maps in the game, and it was only one of the three factions that you could actually play as. But I was addicted to it. I just kept playing this demo over and over and over again, and it, that's all it was. It was just it was one faction, one level, and you just played it hundreds of matches. It was just so interesting. You could you could you could do these little scumbag moves where like you you rush their base within eight minutes and have like. The most basic, lo- like entry level, like soldier attacking their base, or you could, um, you know, basically turtle back and just go slow and safe and build up your army and then like go out. out. Um, it, that was like the first time I played a game where I was like, "Whoa, you can play so many different ways." And um, it was really, it was, a, it was a cool learning experience. I always saw like StarCraft gameplay and stuff like that and I was like this looks so stupid and I think the problem was um, originally I was watching just like high level competitive play for like StarCraft or 
even like the older Command and Conquerors, it's so fast paced that like people are constantly clicking on the mini map so they're teleporting the camera angle and they're clicking over here then they're clicking back over here. On you know on Xbox you have to manually move your camera pretty much. I mean there was hotkeys so you could like teleport to units. But on PC, um, you have that mini map, you just click where you want the camera to go and boop boop. Now you're looking over this part of the map. This one boop boop. Now you're looking at the southern part of the map. Okay, click click boop. boop. Now you're over there. You know, it's so it's so crazy looking at if you're not into uh, that high level shit. So I, I never got an RTS until that, but yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm I like RTS and uh, Halo Wars was Halo Wars one was fucking amazing. I love the shit out of that game. I played so much of that game. Um, and then Halo Wars two came out last year, I think. I played a lot of it. Um, I actually was doing it every day because there was a. If you want to hook me into a game, the best way to do it is to put in a um, a daily login system. Smite was the first game that really suckered me in. They uh, they were like, oh, if you if you log in for seven days in a row, we'll give you like a uh, real world money, like items. So it's like, oh fuck yeah, I can get these skins without even having to spend real money, which was cool. I like that. Um, but then Overwatch did it too with the uh, the uh, seasonal events. Once those seasonal events hit that game, that was a that was a thing. There was a panic because you're like, oh shit, if I don't get these items. And originally I thought what would happen is, you know, I think the first event was the summer games, the Olympic summer summer event games were. That happened. And I was like, well, shit, I, like, because the event had ended, I was like, I didn't get all the items. There was still, like, a bunch of skins I needed. So I was, like, devastated. I was like, well, shit, how am I going to, um, how am I going to get these skins ever again? I didn't, it, it didn't even occur to me that they were going to do it annually. So the next event, I was prepared. I think it was Halloween. I was like, shit, I'm going to play the fuck out of this. I'm going to get all the skins. I'll be so happy. And what ended up happening is, it just, it takes so much time to unlock those loot boxes to get uh, these these skins, potentially a chance to get these skins. Because what's happening is you, you're leveling up, which costs 20,000 experience. So you have to level up, um, for maybe, let's say, let's say you're playing like uh, season play, or even quick play really. Basically, I think it's like for every 20 minutes, it's like 5,000 experience. Maybe a little, maybe a little less than that. Basically, you you play four or five full matches just to level up once. So that takes like an hour at least. And once you've done that, um, you can get one loot box because you've leveled up. So you do, 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 okay, open up your loot box. Guess what? You only get four items, and guess what? None of those items were the the Halloween items you wanted. So the first the first event was really really shitty. In that way but what was cool though about the first couple events is you were able to actually get duplicates and the duplicate rate was pretty high so what would happen is you'd open up all these loot boxes you'd get a bunch of duplicates and you would get, they would just give you straight up gold for it which is the currency to buy the items in the game and uh, so you'd be like okay cool, cool like I remember getting enough gold to actually buy like a 3,000 gold skin which was pretty awesome um, but they've changed it since then. So now you get, you're guaranteed at least one of the seasonal loot box items. So if it's Christmas, you're going to get one Christmas item. If it's uh, Halloween, you're going to get one Halloween item. You get one guaranteed thing. But that, that could be something as stupid as like a dance or just like a little, like a, um, like a gamer picture or an emblem, something stupid like that, which really sucks. But that game was the first one to be like, oh, damn, like. You get rewarded for playing this, and uh, which is awesome. This is all leading in the Fortnite, by the way. So you get this, you get that. Um, Overwatch was the first one. Halo Wars started doing it. I think for Halo Wars, it wasn't so much um, the daily login bonus, which I think was just like a booster pack or something for the the Blitz game mode. You actually get like trading cards. Um, the thing I wanted in Halo Wars was specifically an achievement. You had to play... It was like complete a challenge every day for a month. Which ended up being bugged. No one was able to get those achievements. I'm sure now you can, but... I played the game for probably like 45 days straight. Just doing all my daily challenges. 
Then there was one for completing a, every weekly challenge or something, or complete all the weekly challenges for an entire month or something like that. That one never unlocked either. Which, of course, angers me. Fortnite, a game where the daily login, okay, so, basically, the, okay, like, let's explain it this way, because the game has changed since, since I've started playing it, I started playing it in, like, October, so, originally, what would happen is you'd come on, and you just play games, if you wanted to spend real-world money on the game, um, you could get these things called V-Bucks, which you could use to buy skins, and it was like, okay, that's cool that that's there, but they're not really doing much with it yet. So then, like, a couple months later, they were like, alright, we're announcing the Battle Pass. What, what is the Battle Pass? The Battle Pass is like a season pass, sort of. So for, like, nine bucks, or 900 V-Bucks, you could, um, basically, for every level up, you unlock something. Um, there's basically 70 tiers. Each tier would either give you... Uh, a dance, uh, an icon, an emo, a skin, uh, a different pickaxe, a bunch of different crazy like cosmetic stuff. Nothing that gives you an advantage. And you had to spend like the nine bucks or whatever to get that, um, which was okay, you know. But it gave you something extra to do. So now, on top of like having fun playing the game and unlocking skins and stuff, now you've got these different challenges to complete. So, for season, uh, season two, the first battle pass, you would get, uh, two daily challenges, and I can't remember how, I think it can stack up to three, so you'd get one daily challenge, and then you would get one battle pass challenge every day. So they're not discluding people who don't have the battle pass, you still get, like, your, your daily challenge, or whatever. you just don't get the, the battle pass challenges. So you can't stack those. You can you can stack the normal daily. You just can't stack the battle pass challenges. So now you're doing this, you're doing that. You're leveling up faster. Blah 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 blah. And honestly, if you don't buy the battle pass, you're missing out on a lot of the game. Uh, you level up half as fast. Um, you, you barely got any unlockables. It's kind of it's kind of it's kind of sketchy not to get it. Um, but. The, the big thing about the V-Bucks, though, is if you do play the story mode, you do unlock V-Bucks through playing that. Uh, they're similar to online. There's there's daily challenges in the story mode. The the Battle Pass has no no affiliation with you. Just, you do those separately. You do those, beep, 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 do that. And then you unlock, um, what do you call it? You unlock V-Bucks through doing daily challenges, through playing story missions. Uh, right now, there's a seasonal event. Seems like every seasonal event they also add in a bunch of V-Buck quests. So you're, you're unlocking V-Bucks instead of actually buying V-Bucks, which is great. Because there's a lot of items in this game that you want to actually buy with V-Bucks. And a lot, a lot of the times you don't want to spend real money. Yeah, very good. Very good. Dunkin' Donuts makes a good soft serve. But, yeah, Fortnite just, it's an interesting thing to come out, because every, every couple of months, and maybe not every couple of months, maybe, maybe every year, every couple of years, a new game series comes out, or a new game genre comes out, and that's like the new big buzz thing. Um, but this Battle Royale genre, though, is, it's crazy because... When Overwatch came out, which, I mean, they've already done, like, the whole team-based thing before. Like, the whole, like, Team Fortress style. Hey, there's ten different classes, and, um, you're, you know, you're doing objectives. Um, the whole class-based multiplayer match thing goes back pretty far. But, um, Overwatch was, like, the first one to be like, yeah, let's actually make really unique characters that are cool. We'll add a story to it and all this other stuff. And, um... Then uh, Paladins came out, and that was like, haha, or Battleborn. Battleborn was the first one. Battleborn actually came out before Overwatch, I believe. 
And then, like, two weeks later, Overwatch came out and just demolished it instantly. They demolished that game so fucking badly that it became a free-to-play game, which is insane. So they did that to that game, boom, boom, did that. And then, um, yeah, Paladins came out. And then now Paladins is announcing a... a is that the wind? Holy shit. Um, Paladins is announcing a Battle Royale mode now. So... It's crazy because, so like I said, there was like two two Overwatch-styled games that came out around the same time as Overwatch. There was like some Chinese clones or whatever, but there wasn't to this extent. PUBG comes out in the early access, um, pay, paid early access, I should say. So it comes out in paid early access, you can play it, you can do this, do that, blah, 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 blah. Comes out on console, boom, boom, boom. And... All of a sudden, Fortnite is like, hey, guess what? We're going to release a free-to-play Battle Royale mode. Up until now, we've been like a standard $40 game or $50 game, whatever. And But we're going to release this free free mode. And it blew up overnight. Boom. Fucking massive. Boom, 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 boom. All of a sudden, the mobile games started coming out. These little shitty games. Um, but then, yeah, like all these other ones. Like I know H1N1 was like before Fortnite or whatever was like the original PUBG or something like that. I think DayZ was the first one though, right? DayZ was the first style game like this. It wasn't like fly down onto an isolated island, but it was like kind of like a fly down to an, an isolated gigantic world and uh, basically just kill whatever you see or whatever. But Pub was like the first one to be like, hey, guess what? Boom, boom. But then there's also like the, the cooling, the crawling. I think it's called the cooling, the C U L L L I N G, C U L L I N G, the culling thing. That was the first one I noticed. Where I was like, "Oh wow, this looks really fun." Um, what's his name? Major Sam. He was playing it, and I thought it looked fucking cool. But um, I don't know. It's crazy. Holy shit! It's cold. Though. It is fucking freezing. It is fucking freezing. It is fucking freezing. It's very cold. I love that my neighbor has his fucking window open with a box fan in it. It's literally 30 degrees right now. It's snowing out. Eh, better turn the uh, fan on real quick. But yeah, Fortnite does it the best. Uh, Fortnite is the best battle royale game. Epic Games is the best battle royale game designer and supporter and everything else publisher did they self-publish that game that's ridiculous PUBG <laughs> um, is 30 fucking dollars the um, incentive to keep playing the game is pointless like I don't think the leaderboards even work I've only played the Xbox version keep in mind but I don't think the leaderboards work uh, the cosmetic loot box items are fucking trash there's some weird you can unlock them in the game, but if you use real money, um, you can buy seven a week. It's so stupid. I, I, talking about pub infuriates me because it's very rare that we get a game like Fortnite that's actually really well developed and well supported, and it only gets better. It's very rare for a game to get better over time, but it's doing it. It's fucking doing it. It is fucking doing it. Doing it, boys. All right. Goodbye.